Hello guys, welcome to a new series on the League of 72 loan report. Now, it's not very difficult to see when you look at the EFL that it's a hotbed for young talent, promising players. And there's so many players that make their way, future England stars that make their way through the EFL on their journey. And that is the aim of this series. We're going to take a look at some of the brightest young talent that's plying their trade currently in the EFL, but is on loan from some of the most prominent clubs in world football. Today we're focusing on Nathan Baxter. Now, Nathan is a 23-year-old goalkeeper for Hull City, currently on loan from Chelsea, where he had a very, very great and successful youth career there. He won the FA Youth Cup and the UEFA Youth League as well with Chelsea. And since 2016, he's been working his way through the pyramid and through the EFL. Loan spells at the likes of Yeovil, Ross County, and last season, most recently, at Crinton Stanley. Nathan Baxter has now found himself at Hull City and each loan move has seen him move a step up each time. So first of all, we're going to go into a bit of detail on how this season's gone for Nathan Baxter. Then we're going to talk to some people that know him pretty well, his goalkeeping coach and Deshaun Bernard, who played with him at youth level and now at Hull City. And we're not leaving any stone unturned, a Chelsea fan and a Hull City fan just for good measure. Now, Nathan Baxter might not be a household name anywhere apart from Hull, but he has pulled up a few trees there. He's been very, very impressive. His impact is there for all to see. If you look at his outstanding numbers alongside the performances and the character he's shown as well, dealing with different injuries at different times, it's a loan spell that's coming to an end now, but there are rumours circulating that Hull City will be looking to try and turn this loan move into a potential permanent one. Baxter started off the season on the bench, but once he got his opportunity, he was able to dislodge the number one Matt Ingram, uh, who himself has had a really, really strong season. Since new manager Shota Arvaladze came through the door, Nathan has had to prove himself once again, dealing with injuries again in the second half of the season. And he's been able to, again, dislodge that number one Matt Ingram by playing the last two games. Digging into some key stats, you can see quite quickly why Nathan Baxter is rated just so highly. Following Hull City's 3-0 victory against Reading on Saturday, goalkeeper Nathan Baxter now boasts a 50% clean sheet record for the season. Seven clean sheets out of 14 games. That's golden glove form for a keeper who's been playing for a team that's been sitting in 18th place in the championship. What's so impressive about Nathan Baxter is that whenever he's in the team, it has an impact on the rest of the team, as shown by the performances when he's come into the side. He made his first league appearance in November uh, with Hull firm in the relegation spaces with just nine points in 16 games. That was 0.56 points per game, conceding 22 goals in the process. Nathan Baxter comes in between the sticks and you see a massive difference. When he got his injury in January, they had then picked up 21 points from their next 12 games. That's 1.75 points per game, conceding only nine goals. This remarkable turnaround, which quite possibly saved Hull City's season uh, wasn't totally down to Nathan Baxter. It him coming back from injury coincided with some other key outfield players. But the reassurance that he provided from the back, his communication added to the fact that he made some big saves in some big games made a huge, huge difference. He really does have all the attributes to go to the very top. A six foot four inch frame, great handling from crosses, great communication, the ability to save shots from range and it very, very impressive in terms of getting down and using his feet in one-on-one -on -one scenarios. And his goals prevented is the very, very best in the championship. 1.59 goals per 90 minutes saved in each game that he plays. The best in the championship. And for reference, if you look at the Premier League, no Premier League goalkeeper has prevented more than 1.5 goals per 90 this season. If he is to make it at Chelsea or in the Premier League, he needs to showcase the stamina to get through 40 games in a season. That has hampered his development somewhat, but the potential is clearly there. So you've heard my thoughts on Nathan Baxter, but I was able to speak to the man himself. Let's hear what he's got to say about his time on loan. Right then, so I have Nathan Baxter with me right now. We're going to dive into some of these loan spells and just generally your career so far and also, you know, get up to date with how you've been getting on this season. I think it's it's both unique, the sort of story that you've had so far, but it's also something that you see a lot at, at Chelsea. So first things first, in terms of your um, upbringing at Chelsea, just talk to me about that and, and what it was like growing up as a, as a goalkeeper through the youth teams for Chelsea. The Chelsea Academy is an unbelievable place to grow up. Um, I've got a lot of people to thank there because um, they help you develop not just as a player but as a person. Um, Neil Bath and everyone under him supported me so well. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it and obviously the, the level is really high. The players that you grow up playing with, um, my youth team is obviously 
now kind of littered with players that are playing for either Chelsea or you know in the top top leagues around the world now I think so um, obviously I was kind of used to training at that sort of level and obviously got the chance to to train a lot with the first team at a young age which then really helped me when I went on loan um, and you know you're having to step up to the men's game which has its own challenges but then at the same time probably playing with players which are obviously a lot less uh, got a lot less ability technically so it kind of helped bridge that gap and um, yeah it was a brilliant place to grow up and um, I loved every minute of it and as I said yeah um, made me not just the player I am but the person I am as well. Yeah and so those loan moves that you then make first of all as a 17 year old and just to list the, the clubs for people that don't know Metropolitan Police, Solihull Moors, uh, Yeovil Town, Woking, Ross County, Accrington Stanley, of course you're at Hull City now. That move, you only talk about sort of that bridge between being a 17 year old and then going and playing men's football. Explain what that's like, because I, I mean, seeing pictures of you and clips of you sort of making saves even a couple of years ago and now, that goalkeeper position sort of growing into your, your body, that's something that obviously you can't rush that. It just happens over the years. And, and looking at you now, there is a difference between that 17 year old. Um, how did you find it sort of going into to men's football from, from youth football? I think I was lucky that because we were so successful in the youth teams, we played obviously in games like the FA Youth Cup final, which is like live on TV and at that time is a massive game. So it wasn't like I'd just gone from playing on a Saturday morning at the training ground to then senior football. I think because you had those, which at the time were big games with a lot of like media coverage and stuff. I think you kind of got used to playing under pressure, which was more like playing for points. So it wasn't as big a, a jump. Um, I think that the interesting thing for me was like when I went there a lot of people kind of questioned why I'd kind of gone so low and but I think at the time like I was 17 so there was no one that really really wanted me in truth. Um, right. and why do you think that was when you're you know when you're such a high profile talent? I think because you're a 17 year old goalkeeper <laughs> and I think yeah. if you're a kind of manager in the National League or or even League Two I, well there's no there's no there's no one that plays that age in, in those levels so um, I had to kind of start at that age and it was just a really good experience because I was training every morning with the first team at Chelsea um, and then in because obviously that the teams that I was playing for weren't full time um, so I train at Chelsea and then go and play and yeah it was just a great experience to play Saturday Tuesday play a different style of football because obviously we were playing a lot of long ball um, which mm. and obviously at Chelsea played out from the back and lots of crosses academy football is not really known for that sort of stuff so it was a great learning experience for me and um, and then that kind of period at Met Police allowed me to then go and play in the National League at 18 um, and League 2 at 19 which is kind of like not a lot of people kind of got that experience at that age particularly on loan sometimes you can get lucky if you're kind of like second third choice and you get thrown in when there's injuries but um, yeah obviously the, the sort of goalies that have kind of played at that, at that level at that age like the Pickfords the Hendersons like they've all kind of gone on to have good careers so obviously that's what I've been emulating and obviously trying to trying to continue to do in, in the future. Some of the players that you've played with at, at Chelsea, you know, Tammy Abraham, Mason Mount, Chalabar, uh, Tamori, you know, all these players that kind of come through. I think as an outfield player, it's that little bit easier. D from day one, did you feel like this might be a, a sort of longer trajectory up to the top than it would be if you were an outfield player? Or is that something that you've had to sort of wrestle with a little bit? Yeah, definitely. It, it is harder to, to break through as a goalkeeper. And a lot of the clubs that I've gone to, Yeovil particularly, here particularly, I kind of went as the number two and ended up becoming the number one, um, which is what you have to do. Um, but it's probably harder as a goalkeeper because you probably have to spend a little bit more time like kind of waiting because you can't come on. Obviously those lads got fortunate to have a, a manager which trusted them and, and obviously with the transfer ban and all of that. Um, but yeah, that doesn't really take away from, from my goals and my ambitions. Um, but at the same time, I've always said, you know, it's not just something you say for the press. You, you do have to take it game by game and loan by loan. Um, because at the end of the day, if, if I went to an Accrington or a Yeovil or a Ross County and didn't perform, then there'd be mm. no way that I could have progressed each year and stepped up a league each year and even dream of playing for Chelsea. So I think it's important, although that is my, my end goal. Um, and I'll never be afraid of, of saying that. That's what I want to do and I believe that I will do it and I believe that I can do it. So describe uh, Nathan Baxter to me then as a, as a player and as a person. Um, I think he's, he's, a very, he's a very balanced young man um, but that has a real hunger and desire 
to, to, to play at the top level. And uh, what does the future hold then for Nathan Baxter? I think his future is really bright. I think, um, I think certainly in, in the spell that he played, he looked like a very, very good championship goalkeeper. Calm, steady, made big saves, organised, uh, distributed well. I think now he, all of a sudden, he's a lot closer to playing for Chelsea than he, than he was 12 months ago. I think physically, he's in the best shape of his life. And that's one promise I, I made him when he came in. I said, you'll, you'll play. I can't guarantee when you'll play. That's down to you. But you'll play. But the one thing I'll guarantee you is you will be in the best physical condition of your life leaving, leaving here. And then you have to take that forward. The difference between him now and when he came in the building, not just the, not just the, uh, the goalkeeping side, but I think physically he's like a different, he's a different physical person. Amazing. Barry, thank you so much. It was lovely chatting to you. Pleasure. I really, really appreciate Pleasure. it, mate. Deshaun Bernard, uh, you are a Man United player who's on loan at Hull City. Of course, you were on loan at Salford City last season as well. Did very well for yourself and jumped up two divisions with Hull City. Mm -hmm. um, uh, describe him as a, as a player then, because uh, you, you've played with him uh, a lot. Has he always been the same goalkeeper throughout? And so if someone hasn't seen him play before, what kind of goalkeeper is he? What are his strengths and weaknesses? Uh, he's, he's someone that would continuously talk to you. Like even before the game started, you'll say, you're playing against this winger or this striker today, keep him on this side, show him this side. Uh, and he's always on the front foot. Um, he's just a good voice behind you, really. Um, and th th that's what you need, really. Uh, and his shot stopping, like some of the saves he's, he's pulled out and helped us in games has is, is been tremendous, really. Mm. Yeah, because you've had, you've had a, I mean, Hull City's been difficult, hasn't it? The, the amount of different goalkeepers that you've had at different times this season. Is it always unique, whoever you've got behind you? Do they all have sort of different ways and, and you have to sort of mesh with them differently? Is it, have you found it a bit easier with Nathan because of your relationship with him? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think both keepers, I think when Matt, Matty's been in, Nathan's been in, they, they all have strengths uh, and their weaknesses as well, so... I think whoever plays really, they've, they've, they've done a, a really good job. But I think Nathan's been a bit like me. Obviously, he started off on, on the bench. We had to work our way into the team. And as soon as he got into the team, you can see that he's, he's taken his opportunity with both hands, getting team of the weeks, play of the month. So you can really see he's doing really well. And uh, last question then for me. Uh, what does the future hold for Nathan Baxter? His, 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 his ceiling's very high, to be honest. Uh, as long as he just keeps his head down, keeps working hard. He could go straight to the top, really. You never know how football works. He could be Chelsea's next goalkeeper next season or the season after. You just got to keep working hard and his time will come. And actually, I've got to ask you, because Barry uh, Richardson just said to us that sometimes uh, the goalkeepers will go and play outfield in training with some of the players. What's Nathan, what's Nathan like with that? Is that? Does he reach his limit there? Is he, is he good enough? He's actually been really good, you know. He doesn't look like he's a goalkeeper. <laughs> You could easily play, do a job at centre half, I think. Really? Uh, okay, well, shooting, be careful then. Mate. Shooting be maybe careful. needs a bit of work, but definitely could fill in a yeah. job at centre half. Amazing. Well, yeah, yeah. You look after yourself because it, it, you know, obviously his hands not in the best state at the moment, so he might be trying to pinch your position. So just be <laughs> careful. Just be aware. Uh, Deshaun, thank you so much, mate, for, for chatting to me. I really appreciate, it, mate. All the best. Thank you. Right then, Anthony. Nathan Baxter, we're doing a bit of a deep dive on him as a player. Obviously, he's been at Hull City this season. How do the fans feel when Nathan Baxter is, is between the sticks? Is it, is it one where initially you just don't know what he's going to be like? But in that November where you did as well as you did, you know, only conceding nine goals in the next 12 games with him, was there? did he quite quickly create a bit of an aura with the fans as well where you trusted him? I think his attitude as well, other than his performances, have helped endear the fans towards him. I think, um, I can't remember what match it was, but um, some fans, some away fans threw a bottle onto the pitch. Um, and Baxter, there was a, there's, there's a picture that went around on Twitter for ages where Baxter took a swig from it and then sort of chucks it on the ground. And um, it was that sort of moment helped, sort, I think, spare on the love for him, um, where he sort of nailed down the, this is, the, I, I enjoy this the kind of situation. I'm here for the fight kind of thing. And mm. uh, the fans sort of took to him from that point. And um, now when he's when he doesn't start, there is a genuine disappointment that he's not in the team. And I know Ingram's playing really well at the minute. And it, it, again, it's a similar situation to last time where it would be very, very harsh to drop Ingram for Baxter. 
um, when he when he's I assume fully fit after the international break. Um, but I think if you asked a hundred City fans, they would probably about eighty five of them would say they would rather have Baxter starting goal. And I just think it's his it's his combative attitude. It's his it's his boisterous energy that he brings to the team and, and that confidence in the defenders in front of him you know that if you can reverberate with the fans but also be effective in commanding your area as a goalkeeper then you're already on to a winner are you how excited are you about the idea and possibility of him becoming a permanent signing because when you're trying to sort of uh, upgrade your squad he's the kind of profile right he's the kind of player that you almost want to build your your squad around i think the vast majority of the fan base wanting to sign permanently in the summer i just think that him being settled here and being a permanent signing for the next few years um, at least would probably help us properly, uh, properly plan the, the defence that's in front of him because we know what he, he offers, the defence knows what he brings and um, when it comes to trying to bed that play out from the back system, like I said, somebody who's so comfortable with the ball at his feet in terms of a goalkeeper is priceless in, in today's age. Nini. I needed to talk to you about Nathan Baxter. Uh, Nini is from Blue Lions TV. It's my favourite Chelsea channel. I want to talk about Nathan Baxter, but I want to talk about Chelsea's sort of loan market dealings before that. Because, of course, your, your focus is Chelsea. But with the academy and how strong it is and, and all those players going out on loan, how how often are you kind of keeping an eye out on the EFL and, and the players that you, you've got an eye on that might make it for, into the first team at some point? I think after like so many success stories, seeing like Reese James, Mason Mount, uh, Tammy Abraham, Tamori and many others graduating from lower divisions, like making it in our team. I feel like, you know, every Chelsea fan really has to, you know, strongly monitor the progression of these players, especially now that the club are really valuing the talent that we're producing a lot more than we've ever done in our recent history. Do you feel like, feel like there is a pathway to, to the Chelsea season for Nathan in particular? Um, I, I definitely believe so, to be honest. Um, if I was Nathan, I'd definitely take a lot of inspiration from Edvard Mendy. Uh, when this guy was 22 years old, he had no club at all. And in the end, you know, he was actually thinking about, uh, you know, finding jobs outside of football. It, it took like a former teammate and friends uh, help him get a position playing for like Marseille's B team. And then from then on, he got a contract and then... Literally, his career kicked off. He went on loan to Ream, smacked it, was signed by Wren, and then played for us. And it's not like Mendy accumulated like hundreds and hundreds of games worth of experience. And I actually think that this is where Nathan Bax has a really big advantage now. Because um, I know that at Chelsea right now, they actually like um, use him as like a guinea pig, basically, to, uh, you know, to test goalkeepers and uh, to help with goalkeepers getting loan moves. Because, you know, naturally, if you play for like a big youth team, you're not really getting peppered or tested that much in front of goal. And like compared to all the outfield players who were getting a lot of success finding loan clubs outside of the club, it wasn't really translating the same way with goalkeepers. But uh, with Nathan, you know, uh, at 17 years old, playing in the Isthmian League, uh, playing for like the Met Police at the time, you're thinking, you know, a Chelsea youth player, you know, playing for the Met Police, uh, is he ever really going to make it? But, you know, this is why, like I was saying before, I give massive credit to Nathan because he knew exactly how to progress his career. And already by a teenage age, he accumulated over 100 apps in the professional football. And I think playing as a goalkeeper where you can really improve on like your shot stopping and your you know defensive actions as well too, match experience really is the only way to be able to get that. And I don't really think you have to be playing at the highest, highest level to do so. I think when you're young, it's about solid, just like, building that experience, growing. And I definitely feel now when you look at him, you know, he's a very commanding goalkeeper, a very vocal goalkeeper. And to, you know, have that confidence, like command your defence and tell people where to go, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. You can only get that confidence if you've been playing with, you know, adults and pros since you were young. And I definitely think this is where the benefit is. And actually we're doing the same thing with two other youth keepers in our in our squad right now with uh, Taklami and Wadey. We're playing for like... Uh, Merson and Hendon at this point in time. So, uh, you know, he's definitely proven that this is like a successful model potentially for young keepers at the club. And every season he's getting better and better and better. And at only 22 years old, I definitely feel that he could have a future at the club uh, one day. Is there any any chance of you sort of signing permanently with with Hull City like how do you calculate it and, and and look at the situation that you have here when you know you're somewhere for a season do you just leave it at, at that and then make any decisions at the end of it how how do you process the season as it goes along yeah I think obviously from my point of view as I've said 
and I believe that I'm good enough to play for Chelsea and, and that's still my goal. Um, but if the, if the decision is taken that that's not going to be the route forward for me, then obviously I think the fans all, all can tell the way I play, um, how much I enjoy playing for this football club. Um, obviously the, the ownership is, is quite exciting for all the players. Um, but I think from my point of view, it's all about playing games. So um, if I feel like um, I've got to take a move elsewhere, whether that be a loan or a permanent, then the, my priority is, is going to be where I'm going to play every week. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, but from my point of view, as I said, you know, I think that's, that would be a question for the summer. But you know, I, I love living in the area. I love playing for the supporters of the football club. So um, yeah, it's, it's something that um, it's something that was, is like a positive either way. What's driven it more for you? Is it the ambition to, to be at the top or do you just have that urge as a goalkeeper that you just want to dive about, you just want to make saves, you just want to play? Do you, do you get this same buzz either way or has it all been on that road to, to getting uh, and becoming Chelsea's number one? Yeah, I think it's from, from my point of view, that is the target and, and what can I do to get there? Um, you know, don't get me wrong, when I was, I was lucky that when I was you know, a teenager, I was able to train with you know, some of the big names and, and that was really exciting um, and that helped me develop a lot as a player and obviously when you're in that dressing room as a third choice, you're sitting there, you're watching, you're learning, you're listening to these top pros, the way they prepare, um, but at the same time nothing can beat that feeling of, um, you know, being on the pitch on a Saturday at three o'clock and, and that's what I love and, and that's always been my hunger and desire to play week in, week out and most loans that I've been on, I've, I've actually kind of gone and and had to start on the bench because I've always wanted to push myself and the level that I've gone, but that's never, that's always been with the intention of uh, taking the person's place and, and playing every week. So yeah, it's obviously, my goal is to play as high as I can and um, I'm really determined and, and believe that I can do it. But um, oh yeah, all of these decisions were, were made, um, yeah, to, to give me the best chance of, of doing that. Of course, yeah. I, I just one as well on the when you go back to Chelsea during the summer. Obviously, there's some amazing names that you've sort of worked with, and you were just speaking about there in terms of players, great Chelsea goalkeepers that you've listened to and, and learned from. Could you just give us a bit of insight on on little things that you might have learned of, of some of those those big names? Who have you enjoyed being around the most? Um, oh, as as a goalkeeper, I think you're probably a bit more lucky in the sense that with how small the numbers are in your training group, you kind of get to know people more personally. And, um, you know, as a young goalkeeper, training with someone like Courtois was, was amazing to see the level because at the time he was probably the best goalkeeper. Um, and, you know, to see the level that he trained at every day, to see the way Asmir pushed him. Um, and what is the difference, Nathan? Like, can, can you put your finger on it? I, I think every goalkeeper has their different qualities. Um, obviously, you know, been lucky enough to work with Willie, um, Kepa, Pete, Edu. You know, I've, I've I've trained with all these guys, and I think for me, it, I think it opens your eyes up to how attainable it is. I think sometimes when you're kind of younger, you you think, wow, you know, these guys must be incredible, but and they and they are. But then at the same time, when you train with them, you obviously see firsthand how close you are, but then at the same time, how far you are. If that makes sense. Um, but I think it, gives, it gave me belief and I think, you know, you think, OK, these guys are human and, and if they're doing it, there's no reason why, why I can't. And I think that's obviously why sometimes in the academy at all clubs, you know, they dip young players in and out um, because it kind of gives the, the young players incentive. And, and, and yeah, it was, it was nice for me because when I was going on loan and, and playing at these levels at a young age, you know, it was, it was never anything that was close to the level that I trained at, um, which, I think, which I think was a massive help. Yeah, that's fascinating that as well. I guess you must have moments. One, if they let in one that's possibly savable and you think you could save it yourself, you go, OK, yes, they are they are human. But then I, I imagine the next shot comes in and they save something and you go, how have they saved that? Are you sort of are you always living in that state of flux when you're training with these kind of guys? Yeah, definitely. And it's been nice nice in the last few, like it was nice, not this preseason because I was at whole, but the, the season before where obviously a lot of the main players of the team were lads which I've grown up with. So... It was quite nice to kind of train with them and obviously I don't look at certain lads which I've known since I was eight years old as kind of like these Premier League superstars alongside people that you would see as Premier League superstars. So it was quite, it was quite a nice feeling um, and yeah, I, you know, obviously I spoke with 
the manager at the time um, about whether I was going on loan or whether I was going to stay. And, you know, obviously I was open and honest and said, look, I, I think I could play for you now, but obviously I'm respectful of who's in front of me. And, and, and he was like, yeah, I, maybe you probably could, but obviously that's the situation and you've got to go out and do it the hard way, which is obviously what I've done and I continue to do. And, and, and yeah, obviously that is my dream to one day go back and, and, and play at the highest level and obviously fight for the fight for the, the, the trophies that they are. Well, it's always a flex when I've spoken to a player that then goes and, and, and makes it for those top six teams. So I, I'm delighted that we've had this conversation, Nathan. So I wish you all the best, mate, uh, with the rest of the season and, of course, uh, your future career, mate. Cheers. Thank you.